pardon for that. Um, we'll start with our general update, and I'm happy to um, announce and present to you Mary Rutherford, our President and CEO. And she'll be going over some happenings here at MCF and uh, let, you, let you know what's, what's happening. So thank you, Mary. Thanks, Emily. And thanks, everyone, for patching in today. I, I don't know about the eastern side of the state, but fall has definitely arrived here, and it's just been some glorious, glorious um, turning of the leaves and weather and what have you. I was down in West Yellowstone working with their community foundation over the weekend, and the drive back and forth has just been spectacular. So I hope you're all having a great, wonderful fall um, autumn that has now arrived. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes giving you some overviews of some of the things that are happening at MCF um, in general. And of course, Emily and John and Mary and the team will talk uh, more about the investment world. Mary will give you some more comments as well. You know, we've, um, we've enjoyed some tremendous growth here at um, MCF. And we've heard loudly and clearly across Montana that that local community foundations, that charitable organizations, that professional advisors and um, individuals are now turning more and more to MCF as the go-to place for philanthropy in Montana. And we want to be absolutely at the cutting edge of responding to those community needs and interests. And so we're pleased to report that we have expanded our operations in a little more formal way in that we've opened an office in Missoula. We have had a little soft opening. We'll be doing a grand opening later in November. And, and in that office will be, as you remember, last fall we created the Montana Office of Gift Planning. And so Amy Sullivan, who heads up that effort, is located in the Missoula office although this week she's working up in Sydney, I understand, <laughs> a little bit far away from Missoula. Um, in addition to, to Amy, the uh, Women's Foundation of Montana, which is one of our funds here at MCF, and the only fund, frankly, that has staff dedicated to those efforts, Janual will be office in the Missoula office, as will the Missoula Community Foundation, bringing them in as a partner. We're, we're really excited to be co-locating in the Missoula community. I would also tell you that um, it's probably no secret to most of you on the line that over the course of the last few years, we've had a few bumps and glitches and problems here and there with some of our technology, especially for those of you who are able to access um, funds online to find out fund balances or make grant recommendations or what have you, that it hasn't been, honestly, the best um, experience for you. And so we're really pleased that the board of MCF um, gave us some special approval to do some pretty significant technology upgrades. And we, we started out with some hardware and software upgrades, which probably were completely invisible to most of you. But, but the piece that's not going to be invisible to most of you and that we'll be rolling out um, broadly in the month of October, we're doing some beta testing now, is converting from our former software, um, on the online portal that we used to a, to a new portal that's called Donor First. And this is cutting edge state of the art technology that will allow um, family fund holders, community foundations to go in and look at the fund balances, make grant recommendations in a far better way than, than has frankly worked in the last year or two. So we're very excited about that. Uh, we'll be formally rolling that out in October. We're, as I said, we're beta testing it now with about five or six or seven um, partners that, are, that are, are giving it a run for its money to make sure all of the, the bugs have been worked out. So we're excited about that. I also want to tell you that we've made some, some great um, strategic new uh, hires and created some new positions. And those are listed on the slide for you. The first is the Local Community Foundation Program Officer position. Many of you know Kathy Cooney uh, had responsibility for this effort for a good number, eight, nine years, as half of her job. We've now dedicated, the board is authorized, and we've dedicated a full-time position to this, this effort. And Jen Gursky will be joining our staff at the end of October. Some of you may know Jen. Um, she was originally, uh, I don't know if originally, but 
she was in Missoula for a good number of years, and most recently has been here in Helena working at Helena Food Share. And so she definitely knows about community building, and we're very excited to bring her on board. Kathy Cooney, you all, everybody knows Kathy Cooney, exceptional job of, of really waving the flag around Montana uh, and, and making sure that people know who Montana Community Foundation, who we are. Uh, Kathy is moving into a new role here, the Donor Services Program Officer position, and she'll be primarily working with donor advisors, donor advised fund holders to help them um, maybe more proactively than we have in the past, making grants and bringing to them ideas for funding. That's a very short summary of actually a bigger job. Um, we've created, we've created a half-time grants and scholarships program officer position. Jenny Stark uh, is being promoted to that position. She has been here with us, gosh, maybe seven months or so, um, doing some office assistant type of work. But before Jenny came to us, she actually worked at the diocese here in Helena doing similar work. So we're really excited to have her stepping into that new role. We also have two more positions. Um, that we're very close to finalizing, one we've finalized. Um, the Montana Office of Gift Planning is adding a planned giving officer here in Helena because, as I mentioned, Amy has moved to Missoula. And so um, we're adding a position here, and we're in the final, we don't have a signed agreement yet, but we, we do have a, someone that is very close to taking this position we're pretty excited about. And we'll be able to announce that name once we have all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. And then we also have added a development coordinator, which will be providing a high-level administrative support to both Amy and the new position. And, and the person that we've hired for, the, for this position is Joanne, and I'm embarrassed to say I can't remember her last name. Um, she'll be based in Missoula, and she'll be running very routine um, gift illustrations and doing administrative work. She actually spent a number of years running the Women's Foundation of Vermont and most recently was in charge of um, the annual giving program for public radio in um, northern Arizona. So we're very excited to be adding her to the team. She actually lived in Montana for a number of years and had to leave the state to go take care of aging parents. So it's a great example of Montanans coming back. So those are kind of our, our uh, staff and office and infrastructure growth um, parts I wanted to share with you today. But I also have another little program that I'd like to share with you, and we're re I'm really excited, and we're all really excited about this program. It, we're calling it the Partner for Montana's Future Program. And what this program is, is a really strong partnership with professional advisors across Montana where they can still retain a strong working relationship with their clients who have, who have a charitable interest. And the bot, I guess a very simple summary of this is, rather than um, losing those dollars out of their investment portfolio or their assets under management, those professional advisors might, will be able to still keep those, those funds within their portfolio. The legal ownership of the fund does need to transfer to the Montana Community Foundation, but it really is a way for us to continue working closely with the professional advisors and their clients, the philanthropists who care about Montana. Uh, the board approved this. We've just worked through a lot of the details on how we're going to actualize this. And we'll be rolling it out to the professional advisor community this fall. Uh, we're not going to be able to do it for every single gift type. There will be um, thresholds in terms of dollars, et cetera, that need to be in, in, uh, as part of the fund. But we're really excited to be able to offer this new tool which we hope will just strengthen our relationship with professional advisors across Montana. So with that, I'd be happy to turn it back over to Emily. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Mary. So next I would like to just, um, we, we, we try to take during this time of the call <clears throat> an opportunity to remind everyone of some of the more general questions that we often receive. It's always good to make sure that our constituents, those that we partner with out there in the communities of Montana, understand how the endowments are managed here and uh, how the payouts are handled as well. So on this next slide, I just want to uh, remind everybody about the annual distribution policy that we have in place here at MCF. And we do follow the laws of, of UPMIFA 
Uh, our board takes this very seriously, and we look very closely at uh, the growth of our endowments, that they are um, preserving purchasing power, that they're growing in, in prudent ways, and that we're able to continue to uh, satisfy and do a really great payout to the state. Um, as many of you are aware, last year we increased the payout, the, the board did, to 4.5%. Um, again, the board this fall will be meeting again to review the current payout. Um, I believe that we've had a, a solid year, so I'm not sure that we're anticipating any changes, but the board will take a close look at that this fall and make sure that the endowments can support that 4.5% payout. And of course, that puts us in the top 25% of community foundations in the country at that rate of payout. And we're very proud to be able to give those dollars out in Montana. And next, I just want to remind the group of the fees that are charged with the endowments that are managed. Uh, there are two types of fees that MCF um, charges with the funds under management, and one of them is first the Montana Community Foundation administrative fee. And this fee does cover the cost of administering the funds, but primarily is also used to support the mission to increase philanthropy in the state. Uh, we do that through great outreach efforts and the staff that are on the ground out in those communities meeting with people, and um, we're seeing great um, dividends come back from that for the, for the good of Montana. Also, all of our funds are professionally managed, and those funds do incur investment manager fees that come through. And all of those investment manager fees are allocated directly to the funds based on their pro rata portion of the pooled portfolio. Are there any questions so far? All right. With that, I'd like to introduce Mary Craigel. She is our board chair, and she's also the chair of our investment committee. And Mary is going to take a few moments to offer some comments and um, discussion to the group. Mary? Thanks, Emily. And again, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I love this call. Um, it gives me a chance to highlight the great work of the Montana Community Foundation and its staff who um, tirelessly work on all these efforts to make Montana a better place for each of us. I always say the Montana Community Foundation brings everybody's dreams to fruition one person at a time, so it's pretty amazing. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the great work of our investment team. Um, they, Anderson Hedge continues to perform in amazing ways, and you will see that throughout this presentation. It's been a challenging year. It's been a challenging year for everyone, as they all know, uh, with the market, but I'm proud to announce that Montana Community Foundation has held their own. Um, you will see in our performance uh, relative to our peers that we are doing um, really well considering the ups and downs in this market. Again, thanks to the hedge team and the great work at MCF staff. I also am very proud of many of the significant accomplishments that we have had in this year. Um, we've touched on the new Partnering for Montana's Future program. Um, we've also streamlined a lot of processes, improved the software, and added more staff capacity to each of you to, in order to um, make sure that those that are endowing their funds with us are, have the level of service and get all of the things that they need um, from people that are true professionals and care about the dollars every, uh, and the clients every moment of every day. So, um, I am just very proud to be the board chair of this organization. I would offer at any point if you um, have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, uh, Mary Craigle, mcraigle at mt.gov, 406-431-9434. Um, um, to any other board member um, as well. So the board members are all listed out on the website. Uh, we would love to hear your comments, concerns, um, the governor always says, share your, your uh, concerns and problems and dreams, so I would love to hear them. With that, I will turn it back over, and once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. At this time in our call, uh, this is when we get to go over the 
the investment update. And with that, I would like to introduce John Hedge. He's Vice President with Merrill Lynch and one of our trusted advisors. John? Yes, thank you. Well, as we know, it's been kind of a very volatile year. And what I'd like to do is start out by really just focusing through the end of June, which was the second quarter, and then we will give you an estimated update on how the portfolio has weathered the financial storm in the third quarter. This is a somewhat busy slide, but if you would take and let your eyes drift up here to the stocks on the upper right, and you can see this was as of June 30th, the markets at the end of the first two quarters were plodding along. How's that? They were doing okay. The Dow, you can see, was about break even. NASDAQ, which is technology, was up about 6%. And you can kind of see the S&P 500 was up 1.2%. And these are all major indices for stocks. And then you can see here's a big indice here, uh, EFI, which, stands for, which really represents international investing. That was up 5.9%. So for the first six months, the markets were kind of muddling through on the stock side. And the bond side here, you can see the U.S. broad market master, it was down a little bit. So first six months, stocks doing kind of okay and bonds flat. Well, we all know that things changed quite a bit in the uh, second quarter here, and or the third quarter, I should say. And as you can see, here's a market recap through uh, this last Friday. A lot of things have changed, haven't they? The S&P now down for the year. The Dow is now down for the year. Uh, Russell 2000, which are small company stocks, were down for the year. International is now negative for the year, and emerging markets is significantly down for the year. And fixed income is just up slightly. But because of your approach and how disciplined Montana Community Foundation is in their approach to investing, based on very preliminary estimates, we think the portfolio for Montana Community Foundation is going to be, uh, as of last Friday, down anywhere from a half a percent to three quarters of a percent. And we don't get exact numbers on that uh, except on month ends. So the bad news is the markets have fallen significantly during the third quarter. The good news is, is the diversification you have has uh, held the portfolio fairly even. Where are we right now with the Montana Community Foundation and their asset allocation? Uh, right now, we prefer to overweight large U.S. stocks. We have a small underweight on small U.S. stocks. International stocks are a small overweight, and fixed income would be an underweight. We understand and we recognize that the markets have been volatile, and we actually anticipate the markets will continue to be volatile for the foreseeable future, but we still believe that there's much more opportunities in stocks than there is bonds. This disciplined approach for the Montana Community Foundation has uh, led to quite a 26-year history of asset growth of the investment pool. You can see that over this period of time, total assets right now of the investment pool would be north of $72 million. And uh, we, the uh, investment pool at Montana Community Foundation has had investment earnings of just south of $53 million. And Emily, you might make a comment on the charitable grants number here. Yeah, we wanted to be able to highlight to our constituents, you know, with, with the assets under management, the investment gr growth that has occurred, that's allowed us over the history of our foundation to distribute charitable grants across the state of uh, $35 million, um, you know, near $36 million. And that's you know, that, that's what those dollars are there for, to grow and to grow in such a way that they can continue to be charitable in the state. So really a great number we're proud of, and we wanted to be sure to share that with everyone. 
Those investment results just don't happen by chance. Montana Community Foundation has a very disciplined process and I would like to share a few comments regarding the Montana Community Foundation process. It all starts with an investment policy and what we have done here is just lifted the wording out of the investment policy. And it all starts with the investment committee recommending to the board and adopting an objective for these funds. And you can see the objective has been put together and thought through. And there's six or seven bullet points here that are important. One, it's a balanced approach. It is expected to maintain growth of purchasing power over the long term. We understand that uh, it's going to be a long-term time horizon, and so uh, we can af afford to be patient at the Montana Community Foundation with their investments. It seeks to generate a level of current income. The Community Foundation can also accept some risk in the markets for fluctuation and volatility can be tolerated because of the diversified portfolio at the Montana Community Foundation and the long-term goals. The Montana Community Foundation diversifies the fund, as you will see, very diversified. And importantly, the Montana Community Foundation consistently benchmarks the performance of the Montana Community Foundation with peers and other indices or indexes. So it's a very well thought out approach. The overall approach is a six-step approach. You can see there to the wheel on the right that uh, it's just critical we, we review the MCF approach and why it's worked. We talked about the investment policy, that'd be the first step, and during the investment policy, the investment committee and the board at Montana Community Foundation determined the amount of risk and return and volatility that they were willing to have in the portfolio, which led to what we call strategic asset allocation modeling. That's a fancy way to say how much in stocks should we have, how much in bonds should we have, how much in international should we have, et cetera. Then Montana Community Foundation takes it very seriously when they hire investment managers. And they do due diligence over investment managers, and then they actually do a search and interview and hire investment managers. No investment manager is hired if it has not demonstrated a consistent history of outperforming indices or index funds. And as a result, then a portfolio is put together and the strategy is measured, and then quarterly the performance is measured against independent benchmarks. So it's a quite a thorough process. Montana Community Foundation relies on Merrill Lynch Investment Management and Due Diligence Group to perform the due diligence on the managers that are hired. There are tens of thousands of money managers out there, and it's be extremely difficult for Montana Community Foundation to know them all. In fact, it's difficult for anyone to know them all. So what Merrill Lynch Consulting Group does is we start with an eight-factor model of investment managers that would be interviewed and ultimately hired by the Montana Community Foundation. That eight-factor model would talk about the people, the product, the portfolio, the performance, the process, the philosophy, and the organization. We start with that eight-factor model, and then what we do is we take those tens of thousands of money managers, the broad range of money managers, and we do some initial screens, both quantitative and qualitative, and we bring them down to an investment committee, meet, investment committee level where it's a manageable number of managers that then Montana, communication, Montana Community Foundation can then select from and put together a portfolio of these active money managers. So it's quite the process. 
The Montana Community Foundation would rely on the depth and breadth of the global resources at Merrill Lynch. We would have 708 analysts, and we would have 248, just 248 people that do nothing but work on money managers and perform the due diligence on money managers that we believe will be able to outperform their indices and bring good investment results. That has led to a very diversified investment pool at the end of June 30th. $72 million allows Montana Community Foundation to have a meaningful footprint in many of these different asset classes. And the reason is, is it enhances returns and lowers risk. You can see extremely diversified. Nice to have a footprint in all of these different asset classes. The other thing the Montana Community Foundation has been very active in is the history of their asset allocation. Back in 1990, you would have seen that much of the portfolio was in fixed income or bonds, and a lesser amount was in stocks or equities. And over the period of time, you can see that stocks and equities have become a greater portion of the portfolio and have been diversifying. So again, very dynamic process, very active investment committee, and very active board at the Montana, Communica Montana Community Foundation to try to stay up with the latest trends in global investing. So here's the asset allocation now. And is, what is so important about an asset allocation guideline in the investment policy is it brings discipline to a process to really protect the funds at the Montana Community Foundation. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, domestic equities. There's a strategic target of 45%, and there's a maximum of 55%. And right now, at the end of June, Montana Community Foundation had 53%. What happens is, is when an asset class does particularly well, like domestic equities, and it exceeds its maximum, there's a discipline process to trim that asset class, trim the winner, if you will, so that when we just went through a period like we're going through right now, we don't have all our eggs in one basket. It's very diversified. So again, that's the power of a disciplined, pro disciplined approach like the investment policy provides. This process has led to some very rewarding returns over a long period of time. You can see here annually, this is year by year, the returns. I would like to take a moment and point out that we know money or the markets don't grow in a straight line. There were, particular, there were two particularly painful periods in the last decade that uh, there was a market crash in 2002 and it was down, the portfolio was down 13%. But because of the Montana Community Foundation discipline, where you rebalance, where the Montana Community Foundation rebalanced their asset allocation, look how quickly those losses were recovered. There was a $3.5 million loss followed by a $5.6 million gain and a $3.5 million gain because of the discipline process at the Montana Community Foundation to continue their footprint in equities. Same thing occurred in 2008 during the global financial markdown, mark, uh, yeah, markdown of the markets, down 22.3% in 2008. But again, the disciplined approach to Montana Community Foundation allowed that to be fully recovered in the following two years. The power of the discipline process. How's the portfolio done recently? Well, actually quite well against its uh, benchmarks and its peers. If you look at the trailing one year, the portfolio net of fees is 4.9, gross of fees 5.6, and the benchmark, if the Montana Community Foundation would have just indexed, would have been 3.8%. 
And what's particularly interesting is when the Montana Community Foundation is benchmarked against the Council on Foundations Colonial Consulting Investment Performance and Asset Allocation Survey for the 50 million to 99 million uh, foundation sample out there, Montana Community Foundation significantly outperformed its peers of similar size. So good news in the trailing one year. You can see also very strong five year and then about on top of the benchmark here over the 10 year period of time. If we also look down and we drill down and we say, how has the portfolio done year by year? It would be nice if active managers could beat the indices each year. But what you're trying to do and what Montana Community Foundation is trying to do is have their portfolio of active managers exceed the uh, indexes at least 50% of the time. And if you take it, you can see that two-thirds percent of the time of the last 15 years, nine years, Montana Community Foundation has outperformed the indices. Six, period, six of those years or a third of the period of time, Montana Community Foundation has underperformed the indices. So a 66% batting average, if you will, about performing the indices is uh, respectable. So with that, that's a whirlwind tour of the performance, very strong relative performance for the last year, whirlwind tour of the overall approach and process, which I hope uh, everyone understands is extremely methodical and extremely disciplined. And with that, uh, I'm going to turn it back to Emily. Thanks, John. That was a really great summary of where things have been. And I'd like to open it up for questions to our audience. Um, does anybody have comments or questions that they'd like to discuss? I guess we've got a quiet group today, um, and that's fine. We thank you all for joining us. I want to let you know that you know I'm I'm always available to be contacted, as well as Mary Craigle um, offered and, and Mary Rutherford. We're always happy to talk to any of you out there who have questions about the funds here or general questions about MCF. Uh, we're here to support Montana, and we're here to support and work with you. So please contact us. I also want to let everyone know that if you had um, partners in your organizations or someone you'd like to share this webinar with, it will be available on our website here in just a few days. So uh, if you wanted to remind yourself of a, a couple items that were said or review a slide, you're welcome to come back to our website and take a look at it at any time. So with that, I thank you all for joining us today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and a good fall season. We'll be doing another one of these calls in uh, about the third week of February, and we'll look forward to talking with you then. Thank you.